everybody, welcome back to another Litecoin Underground video. <clears throat> Litecoin Underground video, sorry about that. Uh, today I wanted to talk about some of the limitations of Bitcoin. Now, what's kind of an interesting thing you're going to find about most Litecoiners, probably nearly every Litecoiner that you talk to is going to tell you they're also a Bitcoiner, which seems probably counterintuitive. It seems like everybody these days has a, a camp that they're in, they're going to choose to be either Bitcoin or their Ethereum or their Bitcoin Cash or their Dash or their Venero or whatever. Um, <clears throat> but the reason for that, the reason that a lot of Litecoiners are, you know, are Bitcoiners is because a lot of us started out that way. And what most of us uh, came to realize at some point in time is that Bitcoin is a wonderful invention. Satoshi Nakamoto created a, uh, a revolutionary thing when he created Bitcoin but that there are limitations to what Bitcoin can do. Um, those limitations are intentional. I don't think that anybody who's a devout Bitcoiner would tell you that they would be willing to sacrifice some of these lip limitations in order to uh, solve some of the problems that those limitations create, but <clears throat> they do exist. And so one of the most basic ones that's been talked about probably since uh, 2014 or so or maybe even before that, I'm sure, is um, the block size issue. And essentially what is going on, if you're not familiar with Bitcoin or Litecoin, um, every, on Bitcoin, every 10 minutes, a block is mined, and there is only one megabyte of space on that block. The intention behind that is to keep the blockchain overall small. Um, when you build a blockchain, you're putting together block upon block upon block. It's like uh, you're stacking the history of the transactions into a large database. And in order to maintain that database, you have to keep record of all that history. If you want to keep an absolute accurate record all the way back to, to uh, the Genesis block. So if those blocks, if each block is four megabytes or eight megabytes or 32 megabytes, what happens is the size of that blockchain gets very big very quickly. <clears throat> so one of the concerns among a lot of uh, a lot of people in the Bitcoin community, BTC, is that the size of the blockchain gets too big. It becomes uh, unrealistic for a lot of people to keep record of the blockchain, I guess would be the best way to put it. You don't have enough computing space. You can't officially keep history of the entire record of uh, Bitcoin and therefore um, maybe that can cause some defrauding. So the point is that uh, now this never happened. We haven't seen this go down, but it is, I mean, it's maybe something realistic that could, that could be a concern in the future. So what does Bitcoin do? Bitcoin has a block every 10 minutes. Okay. Um, I'm going to refer to this website here in a minute. I don't, and I don't know if I need to teach you guys this, but I'll write it down. All right. Block one megabyte every 10 minutes. Now, in a ten me in a one megabyte block that happens every roughly ten minutes, if you go to mempool.space, that website is super informative. Will let you see so much about what's going on in the Bitcoin blockchain. You will see. I've actually just looked it up right now. The last it'll show you like the history of blocks, and I just took the last eight blocks. They were all full. As an example of kind of what does a full Bitcoin blockchain mean? What are, when those blocks are full, how much can it actually? process how many transactions can go through those blocks so every for those eight blocks on average there were 2500 transactions per block meaning 2500 transactions every 10 minutes or 250 transactions a minute okay keep in mind there were also on the other side of this just so you know um, in order to get onto a, a block for a new transaction you were gonna to have to wait about five or six blocks. The next five or six blocks are already full, meaning if you wanna make a Bitcoin transaction today, it's actually not gonna show up on the blockchain for about an hour, just so you know. Okay, so at 2,500 transactions every 10 minutes, that's 360,000 transactions a day, which equals a little over 131 million transactions a year. Not very much, right? There's 300 and 30 million people just in the United States. So that would mean that each U.S. citizen could make one Bitcoin transaction uh, about every two and a half years. 
not very much, right? One, if you could use Bitcoin once every two and a half years, it's not really going to be much of a day-to-day -day transaction thing. So that was what Litecoin wanted to solve, right? Litecoin said, hey, uh, there needs to be more capacity to this. So what did they do? They said, hey, we're going to 4X everything, right? So they have a megabyte every two and a half minutes, which isn't really going to blow things out of the water, to be honest with you. That still puts us at about uh, 520 million transactions a year. So instead of once every two and a half years, if you're a Litecoiner, you can use the blockchain as of about March of this year. I'm going to give you a little update here. Um, you get to use it twice a year, which, hey, better than once every two and a half years. But still, a completely maxed out blockchain uh, wouldn't give you a lot of uh, flexibility in when you wanted to use the coins. So what has happened since then, right? We've had just on chain, just real give, give you a quick what Litecoin did to handle some of that capacity with this new Mimblewimble uh, upgrade that came last May. I, I mentioned it in the last video. Mimblewimble, uh, Mimblewimble extension blocks, MWeb is what we call it. Actually, what the Mimblewimble block is a flexible block. So it can actually grow up to 10 megabytes um, above the current size, which means... And this is a, there's a little bit of technical stuff that I don't fully understand as to why, but actually there's less data that gets put onto these MWeb blocks. So essentially we're at about 12 megabytes potential if needed every two and a half minutes on Litecoin today. So instead of one, we're gonna go to 12. I don't know if this mic is working properly. Which 12 megabytes every two and a half minutes is equal to 48 megabytes every 10 minutes, which means you can see here, this is Bitcoin and this is Litecoin currently. So Litecoin has 48 times the capacity in its current state that Bitcoin has to handle transactions. So what that means, it happens faster. Um, like we mentioned in the last video, blocks are every two and a half minutes instead of 10. So you're gonna get on the blockchain faster. Um, Transactions are a lot cheaper because it's less competitive. There's more space. Like imagine a, a concert that gets sold out. When people start auctioning off those tickets or scalping tickets, the prices go up rapidly. And that's what happens in the Bitcoin blockchain is if you don't have, uh, you don't, it's pay to play. So if you don't have the funds to move to the front of the line, you're just going to wait and wait and wait and wait. So at its peak, we have seen at times Bitcoin has gone up to three weeks, I think even more where you can't get a transaction on the blockchain for three weeks. And people are barely using this stuff today compared to what we would expect out of like your visas and MasterCards and all that. So what's the solution? Why isn't anybody freaking out about this? Why, why are Bitcoiners just comfortable and not concerned about addressing this? Um, they will tell you in masses that the Lightning Network is going to solve their problems. Um, I will describe what the Lightning Network is in another video. Generally speaking, what it is, it is a, it's a second layer solution. And what, I, I guess the best way to describe it is that it would be like um, a, an agreement between a lot of users of the coin. I guess this might be a bad way of putting it. But it, it's a way where you can transact Bitcoin without having to use the actual blockchain. So you essentially si uh, tie up a couple coins on the blockchain and say, hey, we're going to transact in our secondary world. When we're done, we'll come back to the blockchain. But it still takes a transaction to get into the Lightning Network, and it takes a transaction to get off the Lightning Network. So just to use the Lightning Network, it's going to take two transactions. And remember, we said, if everybody in the United States wanted to use Bitcoin, you'd only get one transaction every two and a half years. There's 8 billion people in the world. So if 8 billion people needed to move on to Lightning and off of Lightning, it would require 16 billion transactions. 16 billion, and you're only doing 131 million a year, you can see it's gonna take you nearly 100 years to make two transactions per person. It's not feasible, okay? So what I wanna say that is, what I'm, not, I'm saying all this to say that Bitcoin's not a bad thing. Bitcoin's not some sort of awful monster. It was a beautiful thing created by Satoshi. But 
if the world is intended to use these assets and we want people to have the financial freedom and the ability to hold their assets and transact privately from person to person, it's going to require more than one blockchain. Bitcoin is the, the first mover. It's the biggest name. Everybody knows it and trusts it. Litecoin has been around nearly 11 years now. It's everywhere you go. It's also known and trusted. And I think you're going to see other chains also be successful. Things like Dogecoin. Um, I've mentioned Monero before. Uh, maybe in the distant future, Digibyte, I think, uh, will be one of those. It's, it's stood the test of time and uh, will be kind of a, have a proven track record. So um, if you have any questions, you think I got something wrong, let me know, as always. Uh, I don't want to make these too long. Oh, I forgot to mention this last time. Um, on Wednesday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern, I'm on Twitter. We do a Twitter Spaces every week. So if you're if you've never been on Twitter Spaces, it's like a big conference call. They're I, they're a lot of fun. We don't just talk crypto, but really we let anybody come up. If you want to talk about anything, if you want to come in and talk about these videos, and uh, have questions about it, or you want some clarification, like feel free. It's an open forum. Uh, we got a pretty regular group of people that. Uh, we got good banter, and it usually turns into something non-crypto. We complain about the government, that type of stuff, so <laughs> and taxation. So, um, yeah, so that's all I got for today. As usual, this video is brought to you guys by Cake Wallet. I mention it every week. Uh, the reason I support Cake Wallet is because it is a self-custody wallet. And, again, if these assets are going to be successful, it's because people are going to take possession of them. People are going to um, take the time to learn about how to use them and, and why privacy and decentralization and self-sovereignty are so important. So um, go check them out at cakewallet.com or go, on, go to the app store, download it. Uh, just put some coins in there. Play around. If you've never used a non-custodial wallet, it's a little different. You have to write down your seed words. Um, put five, but put $2 in there, right? Just learn how to write down your seed words. Go through the, go through the steps and get comfortable using these coins. It is intimidating at first, and I think um, don't be afraid to do it because everybody who's been in crypto for a decent amount of time has sent those one cent transactions between themselves. It's a practice. So uh, they're a wall. They're a really great company because they do things that I think are in the best interest of crypto long term. So check them out. And thanks again for watching. Uh, follow me at LTC Underground on Twitter. Thanks.